Hello and welcome back to Engineers Escape. Today we're going to be looking at this HP laptop. This is an HP ProBook 450G1. That can be found under the battery. We plugged the wrong charger into the charging port and it shorted something out. It's so pretty much what would happen whenever the charger was inserted we would not be getting any DC current to the laptop. It would run on the battery until it would die and that would be it. Uh, what I've done so far is I've taken this apart one time already and actually I replaced this port here on the side <coughs> and that did not seem to fix the problem. And we also bought a new battery and plugged it in and actually the battery came charged and when I turned the power button on it would run off the um, battery power supply but if I plugged the thing into the side here it wouldn't be charging the battery so eventually when that battery dies I won't be able to turn the machine on anymore so that makes me think that there's a fuse somewhere on the motherboard which is blown <coughs> so we're gonna try and figure that out before we get started if you want to follow along with the same HP guide I was using for this laptop and the circuit diagram I was using, be sure to check out the links in the description below. To take this uh, service plate off, you just push these two tabs in here and then slide it down and we're going to remove that. Next, remove the keyboard by taking these two screws out. There's one here. There's actually a keyboard icon here and there's also a hole here. You need to take those two off. And I believe you just pull this keyboard down this way, and then I'm going to try and pull it up here. It should just fall out. Okay, then there's this ribbon cable. You should be able to just pull up on it, and then pull that out just like that. We're going to need to take these other four connectors up. There's one here. There's a connector here connector here and connector here. One, two, three, four. So you should be able to pull up on this. There we go. Just pulled up on the tape. I think this is another ribbon type connector with the blue tab. Pull it out. And the third one just pulling it up with my fingernail first. Disengage the little clip and grab this little blue thing and pull it straight out. This one just should pull <clears throat> straight out with a little wiggling. This is a 1 16th inch uh, flathead screwdriver. I remember there's some screws wedged under these. <clears throat> these rubber things. And there's six different ones. And there's one here. One here. One here. So there's three on each side of the machine. And there's screws underneath. One here, <coughs> here, and here. We'll get those out with a little flathead screwdriver. Next, we'll remove the CD drive. Here, this one screw looks like a Phillips. Okay, looks like the same size screw. And I believe this should just pull straight out. There's a nice manual on HP's website if you search it. It actually tells you step by step how to take all these different things out. Next we'll remove these four screws to take out the hard drive. Now this should just slide this way and we'll just dump it out. We'll use a T8 Torx bit to start working on removing the top cover. So there should be one, two, three, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's take those nine out first. Just skipping past taking all those screws out. 
Next we're going to remove four torque screws for the top cover. One, two, three, four. I believe in the manual it said there's five, but this one here looks like there's a screw, but there isn't. Again, those are four Torx screws. On. Be nice to me. There we go. Next, remove the following six screws. There's one, two, three, four, five screws. And then this sixth one, I believe, is, might be a little bit different right here. This is like an optional one, and there's also another optional one in this little hole right here, possibly. I don't have one in this hole. I have one here, though. So let's take those six out. Seems like a Phillips Zero fits pretty nicely. There's also these four here. That I need to take out for the top cover. One, two, three, four. And those appear to be Torx T8. And we'll take those out now. There's two smaller Phillips screws, Phillips double zero, to remove underneath the optical drive. It says to begin to try and pry that loose near the optical drive. I do believe that this had to be somewhat open. Did I get it to come loose? And this is the top cover. Looks like this is connected with a ribbon cable right here. So I'm just going to pull this little clip up and pull it straight out. There's the top cover. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. So <clears throat> over here is the power jack. I actually replaced this once. This cable comes all the way down here and feeds underneath of here. So I'm looking for a fuse in that general area. So I don't see anything on this side near there. So let's try and take the motherboard out and see if we can see anything on the other side. So the first thing is to disconnect this. So I'll pull that little connector tab out. Pull this straight out. Disconnect the battery cable. Okay, that came out, just pulled straight out with actually a good deal of force. Remove these three screws to take out the motherboard. Let's see, one, two, three. That is Phillips zero size. Okay, so it says to pull it over here, and then pull it out this way. So lift and pull. Okay. Okay, we got a couple things stuck on here still. Pull up on the power jack to remove it from the slot. If we come on, fuse. Maybe I should just take this thing off so it's not in the way. You don't actually have to remove this chip all the way with those screws as I'm showing here. You can just pull that number two labeled cable off of there. Just pull it straight up and it should pop off. I didn't see it until later, but this chip right here has a little blemish you can see, and that's the component that ended up being bad. Getting power in over here, and then here's the laptop battery. Power connector here. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Well, after a couple hours of searching through the circuit diagram, that thing there in the middle with the three leads, the two on the left and one on the right, I believe that is called D4201. So I think that stands for diode 4201. 
me just show you real quick on this circuit diagram. This is on page 42. You can see what it's called there at the top on the blue bar. Anyway, here it is. <clears throat> you can see one, two, three connections, two diodes connecting to ground at the bottom. And you can see the part number there, L30ESD24VC3-2-GP. And I was able to find that here. L30ESD24VC3-2. doesn't have the GP at the end, but I'm willing to bet that's it. And it shows it for a total of 12 cents. Just kidding, I didn't end up actually buying it from this site. You can see there that it actually has a minimum of 3,000. This is DigiKey where I ended up finding the component. I'll leave a link in the description. You can also find it just by typing in this part number. I ended up getting this for about 40 cents for one of them and paid an extra five dollars for shipping. So I ended up getting the whole thing for less than six dollars with shipping and tax. So I think I'm going to try and desolder it and see if there's only three actual leads. Instead of doing everything I'm about to show, I would recommend just taking a utility knife, scraping it off of there, and then retinning the pads. Swing and a miss. Those traces are so tiny on there, I don't want to screw them up. Okay, well, the old chip's gone. I ended up having to scrape most of it off because I couldn't really get it desoldered. There's where it used to be. Where those three things are. I'm just going to try and tin those. We went ahead and took that off and reach into those pads one two three right there so hopefully if we can get that component it'll work tick tock tick tock five days later we got our zener diode in here's the tag on the bag and inside of that was this so Looks like the same size. Let's try and put it in. Sorry for the lack of focus. I'm just tinning the leads on the diode. Okay. I soldered on all three leads. Uh, be careful because the one on the right hand side is pretty close to those other really tiny ones. Then I went ahead and cleaned it up with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, I think that's good. And after reassembling the laptop, let's check it out. All right, you can see there that it is charging. And if we pull it out, no longer charging. And we'll plug it back in. Looks good, guys. 
All right, guys, if you found that video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.